Welcome to the pro-black perspective where black problems are addressed with black solutions. Your host tonight is the author of the pro-black compendium and Zuberi and the Maroons of Ma'a, the Pan-African nationalist Oni. Oni, what are we discussing tonight? Peace, 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 family. Uh, you're tuning into the pro-black perspective on KWZ Radio. Today we're going to talk about a really important topic, and that is uh, oligarchy. Oligarchy uh, in relation to organization. Uh, realistically, one thing we have to really get inside of the black nationalist canon, right? We're going to have to fight we're going to have to, this is going to be a struggle. This is going to be the real struggle. This is going to be the intellectual struggle of getting rid of the quote-unquote anti-elitism in the conscious community, right? We're going to have to get rid of the anti-elitism so that we can position ourselves to having functional organizations, right? So that we can have functional organizations that actually have long-standing durability. I don't know if you guys were peeping, if you guys remember it uh Make sure you guys check out all the other podcasts on the KWZ Radio Network. But yesterday we are on Shoot the Breeze, and, a, and an interesting discussion came between uh, uh, us, you know, Brother Bakari um, and I, uh, and his son, Keebway, and of course, Carl. Um, we all uh, were discussing socialists, and particularly Thomas Sankata, and what happened to Thomas Sankata, and why it happened to Thomas Sankata. Uh, essentially, Thomas Sankata is running a government for five years. OK, five years. And then after those five years, his right hand man, his boy, somehow is bought. And I'm saying, look, it doesn't if you have power for five years and then somehow still notwithstanding your boy is bought. Right. Did you put in the precautions? And of course, you know, I'm not going to uh, try to simplify and straw man other people's arguments because that's not fair. Right. But what I want you to understand is that. If we want to have the door, if we want Thomas Sankata, because Thomas Sankata's boy ran for 27 years after. So he put in the precautions, right? 27 years after. Okay? If you think uh, Museveni has a long reign, Museveni is like 35 years. So if you think he has a long reign, you have to understand that this is, this is, this is the norm. But you have to put in the certain precautions. Now, if Thomas Sankata's boy was a good man, which is something that Thomas Sankara should have checked before he put him in his right hand. But if he was a good man, 27 years of, of rule would be 27 years of prosperity. Because five years of, of Thomas Sankara was, was five years of prosperity, right? Or, or, or near about, or getting there. What I'm saying is that we have to start studying organization at the highest level, and we're going to have to infuse that into the Pan-African nationalist mindset. And so this right here, this is going to be one of the entries, one of the attempts at that sort of cognitive shift. But before we get started, I want to remind you that I'm part of a podcasting network called KWAZ Radio. Make sure you check out all the programs on KWAZ Radio, including uh, Brother Bakari, Your Forecast, and of course, Cassandra Cheeks uh, and Tanzan. This is D-Webb with the Harsh Reality Podcast. Ask you to tune in where we tackle the news of the day that affects our community only on KWAZ Radio. Greetings, everyone. This is Koku from the Bitter Medicine Podcast, inviting you to tune in to the Bitter Medicine Podcast on KWAZ Radio. Greetings, fam. Tune in to The Learning Curve with me, the revolutionary matron on KWAZ Radio. You are listening to the pro-black perspective on KWAZ Radio. All right, all right. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to, it's going to, it's not going to be super exciting, right? It's not going to be super exciting because we're going to be reading an article, right? Um, and the reason why we're reading this article is because sometimes that's one of the things that you have to do. You know, like I said, uh, yesterday we were, you know, we were talking about how the last generation, the next generation, I mean, generations now today, they, they want TikTok, they want they want YouTube. They want, you know, YouTube shorts and stuff, you know, and you could give it to them. But I think that you have to, again, there's a shift in mentality we have to get through. And that shift in mentality is that you're going to need an elite circle. You're going to need an oligarchy. 
Okay, you're going to need that because if you don't have that uh, that upper echelon, right? That's reading. If you don't have the population that is reading, then you're fucked as a people. Like, because people do not want to read, that's fine. But you need some people who read. You know, it's like it's like people don't want to build bridges. That's fine. You know, but you'd be fucked if you ain't got no bridge. I don't know if y'all ever seen those videos of them of, 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 of people walking across rivers with with, 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 with with things over their heads, you know, like holding things up while they're walking by rushing rivers. If you if you don't want to build a, a build a bridge, that's fine. But but then how much can you transport across a river? How much can you transport? If you don't want to build vehicles, that's fine. But how far can you travel? You know? How far can you travel? Okay? If you don't want to build buildings, that's fine. But what you going to do when it's cold? You understand? Know or when it's too hot? What you going to do when there's burgers walking around looking for stuff? Where are you going to hold your stuff? You know, so, so it's, it's not a question of, you know, you're going to need some people who do some reading. And those people who do some reading, they have to get together and say, look, look, we're going to make society easier for the rest of them. Now, often it's not always the case that they're making society easier for the rest of them. Like I said, there's Sankara, and then there's, um, I can't, I can't remember, I don't remember his name. <laughs> but there's there's the other guy, right? Uh, but um, notwithstanding, I want you to understand that because there's, there, there's this reality that if you have neither, you're going to have, you're going to have the latter. You're going to have the worst one. You understand? Now, what we're going to do is we're going to read these, uh, apparently they're Italian sociologists, right? Uh, uh, strangely enough, I asked this brother for this paper, and I think it's the next paper. It's not this paper, but he asked, uh, um, like, 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 basically, the, the, basically he found this paper, and I was like, okay, let me read this one. Although it's not the one that I wanted, but um, uh, this is the paper. So let me see what the comments are like, um, and we're going to keep it going. We got Kofi and Cantor. Uh, Keta says blessings, family. Uh, Kofi says greetings. So I appreciate the, the fan for coming through. We're going to come through. We're going to try to, we're probably going to skip through this a little bit, but let's go. The Iron Law of Oligarchy is a political theory first developed by the German-born Italian sociologist Robert Michels in his 1911 book, Political Parties. Now, this is what I'm trying to tell you. We should read this book. Okay, we should read this book. Sometimes you have to read the studies. I want people to understand that. And that's why I'm saying, like, I, again, because not everybody wants to read this. Not everybody wants to read this stuff. Not everybody. What I want you to understand is that when somebody says political parties, that should be for you. When somebody says in 1911 political parties, that should be for you. Because if this is a fundamental, principal book uh, going on about the organization over you, right? Over your head, right? You should, you should sit down and, and think about it. Because I want you to understand this too. This is particularly in light of today's news, right? You haven't developed these systems that you're living under organically. Okay? These people have developed their system they're living under organically. You know? Uh, I think it was yesterday, because uh, like, what, what are the news of today is, what's going on in the election in Nigeria? Who won? Who, 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 who lost? You know? And a lot of what you see is a lot of corruption. You see a lot of uh, people fighting over ballots. You see a lot of, uh, of, 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 you know, just, just a lot of sh shenanigans. Right? And, the reason, and part of the reason why you have these shenanigans is because they didn't develop the system. They didn't have long and hard time to think about the system. They were just saying, hey, run this, run this election. And some people are like, oh, well, I'll just, I'll just touch every ballot. I'll just cast every ballot for myself. That's how you win, don't it? And, and in here you have in America, you have different cities, different states, because they developed their, 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 their election system organically, right? Having different rules and different political training, different training for their poll workers, based off of how they see would be the uh, fair or, or egalitarian or, 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 the, or the manageable system that they have. So, so if you look around, some cities have the, the ballot couriers, you know, people who uh, count the ballot coming in every once in a while and, 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 and collecting the ballot. Whereas, like I said, uh, in, in New York, they have, you know, electronic ballots as well as, uh, you know, paper ballots that are collected at the end of the day by the police officers. 
you know? So so the so America so New York has its form of manageability, its corruption, and other cities have this form of manageability and corruption. But because Africans have not developed these sort of systems on their own, right? What they're doing is any any old fool walking off the street saying, Hey, I got a good idea. What about we go and terrorize the people? That way they're gonna vote. You know, you know what I'm saying? It's 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 immature, it's 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 silly, but it tells you that there's a need for a better organization going on among our own people. And that's where you come in. So, like I said, this book, Political Parties, go read it. Go read it. Anyway, it says, it starts to, what's the book about? It starts that rule by an elite, an oligarchy is inevitable as an iron law within any democratic organization as part of the tactical and technical necessities of the organization. Now, follow the logic. This actually makes sense. Let's keep going. Michelle's theory states that all complex organizations, regardless of how democratic they are when they started, eventually develop into oligarchies. Michelle's observes that since no sufficiently large and complex organization can function purely as a direct democracy, power within an organization will always get delegated to individuals within that group, elected or otherwise. Okay? Using anecdotes from political parties and trade unions struggling to operate democratically to build his argument in 1911, Michel's addressed the application of this law to representative democracy and stated, who says organization says oligarchy. That's really important. Whoever says organization says oligarchy. He went on to state that the historical evolution mocks all the prophylactic measures that have been adopted for prevention of oligarchy. Now I want to I want to f- f- emphasize when you read in uh, uh, Wikipedia you look at you look at the footnotes and you see that all these footnotes are from one so all of them are from this source of James Highland right so again somebody studying somebody else who's studying okay somebody studying somebody else who's studying that's that's what that's one of the depths that's one of the things that we also lack as an African people somebody studying somebody who else is studying like like and technically sometimes we like looking into the primary sources. You get what I'm saying? Uh, we look into the primary sources. So if you want to know what Amos Wilson said, you're looking into what Amos Wilson said, period. Right? Which is nice. It's good. Right? But now, is there somebody that you know, is there a scholar you know who's putting together what Amos Wilson is saying cohesively into a, into a, 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 a Wilsonism? No. Uh, or, or somebody who's putting together cohesively what John Henry Clark is saying in a, in a John Henry Clarkism? No. You know, and, and even when you have Garvey, I mean, because, you know, you do have some people who are, 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 you know, you do have Tony Martin and UNIA and so on and so forth. But even when it comes to Garvey, a lot of it is primary sources or it's going to be uh, historical. Uh, but again, you know, I mean, of course, there are some Garvey books, but that's that's, the, you know, more the exception than the rule. Right. Either way, let's uh, let's continue. Let me see what the comments are like. Actually, it looks like a lot of comments. A lot of people are saying, what's up? Uh, forecast is here. Like I said, guys, make, make sure you check out Forecast. And Matron just popped in. Matron um, is telling everybody greetings. So make sure you guys tell Matron greetings. So I said, according to Michelle's, all organizations eventually comes to be run by a leadership class who often function as paid administrators, executives, spokespersons, or political strategists for the organization. Um. Far from being servants of the masses, right, Michelle's argues this leadership class, rather than the organization's membership, will eventually, will inevitably grow to dominate the organization's power structures. By controlling who has access to information, those in power can centralize their power successfully, often with little accountability due to the apathy, indifference, and non-participation most rank-and-file members have in relation to their organization's decision-making processes. And, and the thing is, he's not even lying. And and you sometimes you just sometimes you know this. Why why would you know? Sometimes you know this. Sometimes it's just common sense, but sometimes you just need to read it. Sometimes you just need to hear it for for it to be said. You know what? What if this is a problem? What is a solution that humans often come along with? And and sometimes you have to embrace the obvious solution, the unavoidable solution. The rank and file, like like the rank and file are the masses of African people. You know the people walking up and down. Uh, uh, crates, <laughs> you know, walking up and down crates, and you like, why can't we advance the people? You know, why are you guys walking up and down crates? Well, you should be doing. They're not gonna do it. You know, I was actually debating between whether I should uh, 
whether I should include, and whether I should have done this article or if I should have done uh, this. Hold on a second. Let me see if I can find it. This 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 Congolese um, proverbs on the community, right? I was thinking whether I should have done this or the other one, right? Now I want you to I want you to see. This is proverbs used about the community, right? This is the Congolese proverbs. And again, this is this is this is this is ancient. No, this is Congo, right? These are I don't know how old they are. They could be ancient, they could be not ancient, but they were passed along all over the Congo, these proverbs, right? Um and this is this is what they're saying in and it says Dia Ya Umwa Walambala la uh Bantu Gula Bwala Kuyezi Boko. Right? It says, eat, drink, and then sleep, for you ignore how the village was built. Just watch and see. Don't be involved in fundamental social issues of cultural and systematic discrepancies. What does this mean? It's saying the rank and file, enjoy your life. Enjoy your life. You, you, you ain't really about building the village. Let's, let's, let's admit that. You ain't really about building. You're just about eating, drinking, sleeping, you know, which is fine. Ignore, you ignore how the village is built. Just watch. We elites are going to handle it. We are, we are going to handle the fundamental issues of cultural and systematic discrepancies. We are going to do that. You could just eat, drink, and sleep. That's an oligarchy. You understand? That's an oligarchy. He's like, this is what he said. This is, the, the white, boys, white boys don't come up with nothing new. They just use a bunch of words that we might be familiar with in the sense of this. If I tell you this right here, in fact, when you heard me saying this, you were like, what you, what you that boy, stop. Yeah. <laughs> you were like, boy, stop. I can tell you this. I can say this to you every fucking day. Dear Yahweh, while I'm balala. Right? I can say that to you every day. It won't make no, it won't make no damn sense to you. You were stolen. You know what I'm saying? You were taken. Now, unless you, unless you Congolese, right? You, you don't know what I'm talking about. You know what I'm saying? And, 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 and the kicker is this, you are Congolese. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I, I, especially if you from the from the well, a lot of a lot of Africans. Right? But especially if you in the Western diaspora, you probably got some Congolese in you. Right? But that don't mean nothing to you. And this this is this is probably what you were saying before you was kidnapped. And so and so now I'm I'm showing you this white boy saying, he's like, you know what, I, I just realized, you know, uh dear Yanwa. Oh no, no, sorry, sorry. <laughs> um the elites, you know, blah, 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 right? He does that. And now I'm just bringing it back to you and saying, look, man, look. You had the same social organization, but, but you forgot it. Because now, right right now, what, you, what a lot of us are thinking is, man, I don't like elitism. I don't like elite theory. No, we got to include the rank and file. We got to wake up the masses. The masses are going to, the masses are walking up and down crates. They're walking up and down crates. They looking at they looking at twerk videos, you know. I mean, <laughs> but they they are they looking at makeup tutorials, you know. They're saying to themselves, "How can I buy a new wig? I ain't gonna look good for my birthday if I don't got no wig." That that that's what's happening. That's what's happening. That's the reality of the world. Let's see what the comments are like. Everybody just saying greetings. Uh, let me see if anybody new. Nah, everybody just greeting greetings. Already know, uh, but let's see. Oh, let's go back to it. So I said the leadership class, rather than the organizations uh, uh, having relation to the organization's decision making process. You're not in the decision making. A lot of people are not going to be in the decision making practice, and that's important. That's good. You don't want the Ascari, the activists, the astute. You don't want them in the decision making process. You just want you, the Ancobia. You just want the highest uh, cultural or cognitive expression to be in the decision making process. That's it. But you also have to get yourselves in organizations, i.e. oligarchies, according to this white boy, right? You have to get yourself into organizations in order that you can be in the decision-making process. And that's not that difficult. In fact, I'm going to play this video. I want to play this video of this brother who said, hey, if you want to work in Africa, uh, you just got to present yourself as an organization. We're we going to play that. We're going to play that. Uh, Michaels argues that democratic. Oh, I want to play it. I don't know if I'm going to, but we're gonna. We're gonna I want to play it. Michaels argues that a democratic attempt to hold leadership positions accountable are prone to fail. Now that's dangerous, right? But that is what it is. Since the power comes, 
uh, since with power comes the ability to reward loyalty, the ability to control information about the organization, and the ability to control what procedures the organization follows when making decisions. All of these mechanisms can be used to strongly influence the outcome of any decision made democratically by members. Michael stated that the official goal of representative democracy of eliminating elite rule was impossible, that representative democracy is a facade legitimizing the rule of a particular elite, and that elite rule, which he refers to as oligarchy, is inevitable. Okay? Later, Michelle's migrated to Italy and joined Benito Mussolini's fascist party as he believed this was the next legitimate step of modern societies. Okay? The thesis became popular once more in post-war America with the publication of Union Democracy, the Internal Politics of the International Typographical Union, and during the Red Scare brought about by McCarthyism. But you see this? He's like, look. Now, this is one thing, too. He's like, look. And he, he's not just talking about Western societies, but, but let's, just, let's just say it like he is. Western societies are bound to get into fascism. And, and see, the thing is this. When, when he says fascism, he's like, look, <laughs> America's an oligarchy already. You, you understand that? America's been an oligarchy. It's always been an oligarchy. Always. And, but every society is an oligarchy. Ancient Kemet was an oligarchy. You know, the, the only ones that are not quote-unquote oligarchies would be the quote-unquote monarchies, but even the quote-unquote monarchies are oligarchies. If you're, the, if you're the king, right, if you're the king, you know, if you're the chief of a village, right, you might be like, oh, that's not an oligarchy, that's a, that's a monarchy. Okay, fine, right? <laughs> instead, of, instead of a handful of people, you got one person. But realistically, this one person has, has, is surrounding himself with different high, uh, with different families, i.e. oligarchy. I.e. oligarchy. <sighs> anyway, we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna try to just read through this. I I, I didn't I didn't personally read through it because I thought I was gonna read it with you guys, but um we uh we uh we saw this over matron came through. She said we have always had elites and we didn't usually treat our masses badly. No, you don't have to. You don't have to treat your masses badly. That's the, that's the whole thing. We, we have this, we, what happens is that we were trained to look at this word elite, look at this word oligarchy with a negative connotation. And because we were trained with that, that's what, that what that does is that it pushes us away, us away from a natural formation. You know, it's like, it's, like, it's like when people are like, hey man, don't drink water. Look, drink Gatorade if you want to hydrate yourself. You know, you got water, but they like drink Gatorade if you want to hydrate yourself. And that fucks you over because you're like, man, why am I drinking? You know, you got a lot of people, a lot of athletes, a lot of, a lot of fit people who are like, yeah, I got to get my electrolytes. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, you, you got to get my electrolytes. If, 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 they, if they tell you something that, that, if they tell you that your social organization should be uh, kumbaya and democratic, what happens is that you get fucked over big time. And I, and I told you guys, I, I, I quoted it yesterday. In fact, I'll, I'll try to quote it today. In fact, uh, I quoted it yesterday, but I'll try to quote it today. Um, let's see. Right here. Um, this right here, for those of you who can't see, this is uh, some of the Book of Power. So make sure you guys check out the Book of Power. Uh, but this is going to be Sankara, right? Sankara is like, let us stop lamenting the misfortune which has befallen our country. Our sincerity does not excuse our guilty feelings of powerlessness, which leads to defeatism. I understand that we are shocked to be accused of what we are not, to be accused of what we have, of that which we have not done. So he's like saying within his own oligarchy, within his own, within his own community, because he has that democratic mindset, the democratic mindset, because he has that mindset, he has a lot of dissenters and dissension in his own group, right? And he's like, we're being accused of shit that we ain't even doing. Now, now, bear in mind, he's already been infiltrated. But because he has that democratic mindset, the infiltrators have as much voice as the loyalists. And so what he says is this. I propose, because, and this is, this is, this is, a, this is like maybe a few days before he's killed. Before he, he, he plays the chessboard wrong. Because that's what white people are doing. They're preparing you to prepare, prepare the chessboard wrong. Right? They're telling you, hey, be democratic. Hey, this dissension is not bad. Dissension is not bad. 
having having other people influence the decision making is a good thing. It makes for a better process. They're telling you this. And what happens to Sankara is that he's killed after this. And his whole country is put backwards because of this. If Tara Sankara said, hey, you know what? Nah, kill that noise. Dead, 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 dead. Right? If he did that, he would have been in power for another uh, 20 years. And then his country would have benefited from that. Now, some of us would be like, oh, you know, he's a little tyrannical. But that's, that's the dumb one of, of us. The dumb ones would be like, he was a little tyrannical. No, what, 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 what everybody else would say is, man, he brought great prosperity to us. He helped us out. He brought us up of our, out of our conditions. He, he, he pushed the French out and he got us going good. He gave women's rights. He gave educational rights. Yeah, sure, he, 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 cracked a, he, he broke a few omelets. But you can't, uh, he broke a few eggs. But you can't make an egg without breaking a few, uh, you can't make an omelet without breaking a few eggs. <laughs> anyway, uh, y'all know I ain't eat enough. <laughs> All right. He says, I propose that we go to, we go to the masses. To demonstrate our cohesion by holding meetings, denouncing and condemning. I shouldn't make fun of him. I shouldn't make fun of him. So I'll try to do a, a better voice. But look, that we go to the masses to demonstrate our cohesion by holding meetings, denouncing and condemning these divisionary currents, ridiculing them as they deserve those who until now extol with more or less goodwill the virtues of the revolution. It is urgent that we go out, that we talk, that we reassure our people. It is urgent. You ain't have to go to the people. If you know that there were people fucking around, you should have you you chopped their necks off. You should have given them an ultimatum. Say, man, look, man, you had to stop fucking around. I'm going to chop your fucking head off. You understand? You say, you had to stop fucking around. I'm going to chop your fucking head off, period. And, and you go on a timeout, and you got to think about that. You know what I'm saying? You, you tell them. Uh, you all know what time out is. That's prison. That's jail. Because, you know, the thing is that these motherfuckers is, is contacting America to, 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 to come and get uh, Sankata. But Sankata is being innocent and saying, let's go. Come on, guys. Let's go to the masses and tell them, hey, we're all fine. Before he could even make it there, they fucking shoot him in the head. You got to understand. He says, we must eliminate troublemakers from our ranks. So you know there are troublemakers in your ranks. We must eliminate troublemakers from our ranks. No, you got to eliminate troublemakers, period. You got to get them out of, you got you to put those motherfuckers in prison. You got to get them out of contact with the enemy. But instead, he got troublemakers in his ranks. And he's writing down a proposal. Like, do you guys understand, you guys know what I'm saying? He's writing down a proposal to give a speech later on where he tells everybody, hey, guys, we should get rid of these troublemakers. No, if you know who the fucking troublemakers are, I'm telling you right now, black men, black women, you listen to me right now. If you know who the troublemakers are, get rid of them immediately. No fucking discussion. Keep your, keep your, keep your eyes on them. Keep your spies on them. Right? And the moment they slip, you fucking shoot them in their fucking head. I'm not playing. Because if you don't, like I said, what happened to Burkina Faso is it went from a trajectory of, of, of positivity, of productivity, towards tyranny. The Ascari are going to pull down your country. These fucking troublemakers that are, oh man, they have a disagreeing opinion, right? They killed this man. Good man. Good, but misled, man. And, and, and I want you to understand, most of us are misled just like this. Because we all of us are thinking the same thing. You know, all, all of us are, are raised in a, you know, to, to think the same thing. Hey, you know, well, we should, uh, we should be democratic about our, our, you know, if there's somebody who disagrees, well, you got you to gotta, you gotta make sure that they are, uh, you got to bring them up to speed. Or, or it's, it's good to have a disagreement, you know. In fact, I, I was on uh, Bakari's program and this brother came through and he was like, we shouldn't have an echo chamber. The fuck you should? I mean, look. You shouldn't have an echo, echo chamber, right? Especially if you're wrong, right? But understand that if you're running a government, you know, if you have a real responsibility, right? The time for fun and games is over. You got motherfuckers named troublemakers. Now, granted, this could be a translation, you know, problem. But you got motherfuckers called tra troublemakers, in your ranks, 
and 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 maybe one of the troublemakers was like, "What you're trying to impose a a a a, a echo chamber?" No, motherfucker, I'm trying to have no trouble. All revolutionary social, I'll, I'll keep reading because I, I know we got things to go. All revolutionary social struggles con contain fraudulent individuals uh, infiltrating their movement. So he knows. Our current situation and long-term situation must be changed to eliminate them. If it must be changed, then fucking change it. Don't even announce it. Don't even announce it. Do not even announce it. Just change it. If I start fucking around, if we in the organization, if we in the administration, I start fucking around, you just knock on my door. Cause I, and I, this, 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 look, I'll tell you this in fact. I'll tell you this in fact. You in America, right? You start saying some fuck shit about, I'm going to kill so-and-so, and so-and-so, and I'm going to do so-and-so, so-and-so damage. You know what? Motherfuckers in the police department, or the FBI, or whoever, they go and knock on your door, and they say, hey, man, you better stop saying that shit. This is America. You, you just a YouTuber. You're just a YouTuber, and you're like, yeah, I'm going to do this, so and so forth. Motherfuckers start knocking on your door and say, hey, man, we've been listening to you, and you got to cut it out. Black Americans. I'm telling you the truth. You're not even in the upper echelon. You're in the lowest echelon, and you're just talking about doing some fuck shit. And they're like, knock, knock, knock. Hey, you know what? I don't like what you're saying. So, you know, tone it down, cut it out, but we're looking at you. We're watching you. That's in America. Now, this dude has, he's, he's running a nation. He's not dealing with some rabble rousers just talking on the internet. Now, there's no internet back then, but still, he's not talking about some rabble rousers talking in their bedroom. He's talking about running a nation, people in charge of militaries of his country, people in charge of feeding people in his country. And his whole thing is, well, guys, let's meet up. You know? You supposed to be knocking on doors. You know? We're going we gonna to talk about, because uh, some brother had me watching a, a, a video on Russia and uh, Ukraine war and Putin and so forth. And Putin, how, how America, how the West was trying to turn uh, Putin's elites against him. And a lot of those elites who publicly condemned Putin suddenly fell through windows. You understand? He wasn't, hey guys, let's, let's get together. And, I mean, he did, he did have some public speech, but a lot of these motherfuckers fell through windows. But they wasn't known to be clumsy. And Putin's still in power. And that's, that's, that's what matters. Because the person, if Putin were in power, the person after him, the person the West installs, would do a lot of fuck shit to the Russians. Yeah, I said it. Because we know, we know how the fucking Westerners do. But anyway, our, our current situation and long-term situation must be changed to eliminate them. Our revolution will advance with this purification. We will not lose anything by this emotional action. The eventual difficulties will pale compared to what we are currently experiencing or the suffering which our people are currently undergoing. So he's like, look, we must advance with this, you know, revolution will advance with this purification. You know, we must, we must purify our organization. Uh, we will not lose anything by the emotional action. The eventual difficulties will appear. Yeah, okay, hold on. He's like, it might be difficult if we, if we purify, you know, if we get rid of the elements that are negative. But we must do it, you know, so that our people can advance. So then fucking do it. And see, what happens is he doesn't do it, and the Ascati purify him. If you don't make the first move, the other person does. You understand? Know and that's just kind of sense. If you do not make the first move, the other person does. Okay? Because you're both, you're both, you're both, it's, it's the opposition. It's the ops. It's, 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 you're in conflict. So one person makes the first move. If you're both moving against each other and you don't make the first move. I, am I, am I making sense? Am I making sense? I'm pretty sure I'm making sense. So let's see what the comments are. I kind of cut off the comments for a second. Um, uh, Forecast says, but do you think some of the old ways left you vulnerable and more subject to ki be kidnapped? No, no, no. So, so I think that, see, see, the thing is this. You, you are going to get kidnapped regardless. You know what I mean? You're going to get kidnapped regardless because you're talking about coming against a war machine that you had no business that had no business coming against you. You know what I mean? If 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 twenty guys, no, if twenty military men rush into your house to take. In fact, matter of fact, I'll tell you this right now: if the police come through to your house, or or, or everybody knows this, when the police come to arrest you, right? It's unless you have a, a, a series of arms. In fact, it's very rare that you're not gonna get kidnapped when the police come to arrest you. And, that, and the police is a small unit. 
compared to what moves on Africa. Right? It's very rare that if you're in your home and the police come knocking on your door, 20 people deep, armed to the teeth, right? That you're not coming out uh, either, vol either, either walking or in a body bag. You was ambushed. And you wasn't prepared. So that, that the ambushing had nothing to do with how you were socially organized in your home. You just, you just, you just like, like, like the technology, the technological, the technological gap by the time they came and was kidnapping people was just too freaking, was too large. It was just too large. You know, it's just too large. The technological gap when the police come through, if you're not armed, technological gap that comes through when the police come through is, is too large for you to not come out in the body bag. Because whatever strategy you think you might have, right, whether it's like, I'm just not going to open the door, and they kick down your fucking door. That's it. You, you, now you're out. Or you're like, hey, I'm not going to voluntarily walk. Well, then they're going to knock you the fuck out. You know what I mean? Like, they're just going to knock you the fuck out. They're going to tire you. They're going to wrestle you until you're tired. You know, you say, well, I'm not. I'm just not going to come out of the house. Okay, well, then it's going to, uh, like, like, like Brother McCarty was talking yesterday, when, uh, when, 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 they, when they found out who was responsible for what, the, the NFAC, Not Fucking Around Coalition, uh, surrounded this person's house. And when the person got hungry, because you're going to get hungry after a few hours, right? They, they told Uber Eats and Grubhub, don't come through. So now when they tell somebody not to come through, like, again, unless you have a large storage of food waiting, if that's your technology, then, 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 yeah, they're going to come through. Like, 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 like you're, you're going to get kidnapped or you're going to be in a body bag. You know, it's, 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 it's not like, like there's certain things that when you have, like when you're at war, when you're at conflict, like there are certain battles that unfortunately, like it doesn't even come down to that. It's like, how do you like, like these, this is like a no win situation when these white boys moved in on you. But the people who had the best resistance, bear in mind, were the people with the with the with the best organization. You said the people with the best resistance were the people with the best organization. But but again, there was this huge technological gap. You know, I think I think uh, there's some story about the Shanghai and how the Shanghai had like the really formidable military, like four hundred thousand troops type shit, and then I think um, or like a hundred thousand troops, which is a lot. A lot, even by today's standards, that's a lot. You got a hundred thousand troops mobilized. That's a lot. That's a huge army. And then there were like two thousand British gunmen, and they gunned down the horses, the cavalry, and that was it. And ain't nobody in the ancient world, nobody in the world saw anything like that. But you have this cavalry that's unbeatable, and then you have gunmen who just mow down the cavalry, mow down the horses and the soldiers. That's it. Suddenly, what you what you knew, like what what you could have done, like 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 that force that that cavalry that could have taken over every other village, but didn't, was taken over by two thousand soldiers, and that's two thousand soldiers. So soldiers stronger than police, but yeah yeah yeah. So I I don't think the, the always left you always was protecting you, um. But, but again, you know, you're talking about a technological gap that we wasn't even trying to fix, that we weren't even aware of. You know, it's like, it's like if aliens come here and they, and they could, you know, <laughs> they, they could, you know, disappear you with their mind. You know what I mean? Like, you can't even fucking, like, you can't do shit about that. You know, <laughs> they, they could just think you out of existence. You know, you just turn, you know, or like they got that Thanos glove. You know, <laughs> they just snap you out of existence. That you can't, you can't fucking do shit. You know, it don't matter. This motherfucker can just snap you out of existence. Like, it don't matter. Uh, Major says, we can let our people sleep, but we must take care of them. A well-fed people who are made comfortable do not turn on their leadership. Exactly. Uh, Major says, you can conquer with fear or kindness. The Dogon said conquer with kindness. The masses will be conquered um, uh, no matter what. Yeah, they're going to be conquered. Like, like, like somebody's going to rule. And if nobody rules, somebody's going to come up and rule. That's it. Like, somebody's going to rule. The major says democracy is like mental masturbation. It gets you all excited, mentally tired, and produces nothing. You know? 
I know mean, that's a little TMI, but yeah. <laughs> uh, Kenneth says, yes, democracy, freedom, and so-called rights are all just play. They all just play. Uh, Vorkast says, so what if I think the leader making a bad decision that will hurt us? If I question it or challenge it, should I be punished or excommunicated? Um, well, it depends. Like, I, again, that's the thing, though. In reality, if you're not in the decision-making process, that's your problem. Why are you not in the decision? Why are you not in the decision room? You know what I mean? Now, if you're saying, yeah, if you're saying, yeah, I'm not in the decision room. You're not in the decision room. So just eat, drink, and, 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 and sleep. If you're not satisfied with eating, drinking, and sleeping, but you're also not satisfied with being in the decision room, then, like, what's going on? You know? Like, what's going on? And then, of course, it becomes... And here's the thing, too. It's like, let, let's say, for instance, I disagree with um, Biden and his war. What can I fucking do? And this is the thing that we have to realize, too. It's like... That's the thing about America. What can you fucking do? You don't like Biden's war? I don't like his... I, don't, I do not like him supporting Ukraine. I don't. What can I do? Because, see, what, what Biden does is that he does not put me in a position to do anything. He's, he, as the president of the United States, doesn't even recognize me. And he definitely doesn't have me in any sort of position to do anything. What these people do... Be, well, like, first, check out the YouTube, right? You got nine concurrent views. That's nice, right? The reason why it's not 900 or 9,000, right, or, or 9 million, right, is because YouTube says we're not going to, we're not, our platform is not going to be designed to elevate and escalate this message. Okay? In, a, in an organic way, it could have been 9 million. It could have been. If, 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 if YouTube wasn't on its game, it could have been 9 million people. It could have been, hey, you know what? Let's let's push this around. Let's 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 get people engaged. Let's let's all go listen to this one thing, so on and so forth. But it's not. You know, we, we, yesterday we were seeing this video on Shoot the Breeze where these dudes, it's black men, black men all over the world or all over America, were like, "Are we frolicking?" And and <laughs> black men got together, like all black men all decided they're gonna just record themselves running through grass and falling down, playing like children, right? How does that go viral? How does that go viral? Black men, virile, strong, intelligent, saying, oh, we're, we're going to run through the grass like children? How does that go viral? You, you understand? There, 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 there are things in the background that say that, that you're not, see, it's not so much that See, the thing is this. That's what I say about America. America is sophisticated. America punishes you. And America excommunicates you. Right? It already does that. It already punishes and excommunicates you. So the answer is, yes. You, you challenge the authority of America, and they, they do already punish and excommunicate you. They already do it. They just do it in a sophisticated way. Just like I said, the America already counts the ballots when, when, when you go to vote. America already counts the ballots when you go to vote. But, uh, but, 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 but the thing is this, right? You, when, when, when you in Africa, right? You decide to count the ballots in a different way. You decide to open up the ballot box on camera in front of everybody and, 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 and fuck around and do some dumb shit. You don't go on the, you don't do it behind closed doors. YouTube is censoring you. YouTube is blacklisting you. Right? But it doesn't do it openly. It doesn't say, hey, here's a list of, of accounts that we're blacklisting and, and blocking. Here are the list of accounts we don't want you to look at. Here's, here's uh, you know, don't check into Forecast Radio. Don't check into uh, uh, Brother Bakari. Don't check into Bitter Medicine. Don't check into Matron. You know, don't don't check into you know look look, look, look whatever Keta's vi uh, uh, video history is. Uh, don't check out those videos, right? It, it doesn't do that. It doesn't say it openly, but it does it. So yes, if you have somebody challenging the, your authority, uh, if you have the right, if you if you're cons if you if you believe that you're making the right decisions, because you probably. Like, that's what I'm encouraging you to do. Make the right decisions, right? Make decisions that are beneficial to everybody, right? But if you feel that way, right? 
then the person who's 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 coming at you, one thing you got to make sure is this: that motherfucker can't do shit to you. Cause it's it's okay if you could. It's okay for you to say, you know, man, I don't like this government. It's okay to have that public sentiment read and understood. What's the problem is when forecast says, hey, you know what? I don't like, I don't like what Oni's doing. I'ma shoot him in the head. You know what I'm saying? That's when it's a problem. And sure, if you if, if forecast says I want to go shoot Oni in the head because I don't like his decisions, then yeah, you gotta punish and excommunicate forecast. You know what I'm saying? And if you don't. Then forecast gonna shoot me in the head, and then he's gonna get into power, and he's gonna take care, take get rid of everything I've done. But I mean, maybe that's for the better, maybe that's for the worse. I don't know. You know, I'm sure forecast believes it's better for the worse, but you know, knowing forecast, he probably gonna have us eating chitlins with sausage. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so I don't know. <laughs> you know. Uh, but anyway, um, let me see what this says. So, uh, Shock says he's been weak on that aspect. You know, uh, Matron uh, says. We need a benevolent dictator. I don't know who's he. Is it Sankata? Is it uh thing? But Major says, we need a benevolent dictator. The mass people don't know what they want or need because they have not known what it be, what it is to be free men. Men must be made ready for freedom. You know, I know we don't like the idea of being told what to do, but that is how all of the groups amass power. Each man must run his own family house and connect to other men in strong families and houses. You already know. Uh, Bit of Medicine saw the frolicking video. He put it. He posted it. I mean, he put it up, uh, shaking my damn head. He's talking about shadow ban. Uh, Bit of Med uh, Black Brother Bakari says, uh, uh, not blacklisted. We don't own it. It's whitelisted. Yup. Um, <laughs> Forecast Radio says, I don't know the president of America isn't a dictator, but you can say you disagree with the president. Um, no, you, you can't say you're gonna do something to the president. You know, if you go around and saying you're gonna do something to the president, you get visited. You know what I mean? And plus, like, depending on where you are, what position you are, this is, this is, again, like, people ain't worried about what the people are saying. You get what I'm saying? Nobody's worried about what the people are saying. What people are worried about is what the elite are saying. Okay? So if you are um, representative so-and-so, like, if you're in the Democratic Party, if you're a Democratic Party official and you're talking shit about, oh, uh, Biden, right, Biden's going to make some trouble for you. You know what I mean? Biden's going to make some trouble for you. Uh, uh, Biden's going to make some trouble for you. Forecast says, uh, not shoot you, but go on a campaign challenging your vaccine mandate. Um, now, I ain't never said I had a vaccine mandate, but, <laughs> but yeah, I mean, look, if you can't do that, again, nobody's really worried about what the masses are saying. Because, like you just said, not shoot you, then nobody cares. If you're not going to shoot me, I don't care. Like, you know what I'm saying? like if, if you're not going to shoot me, I don't care what you say. You know what I mean? You could be like, man, your mama so... You know, I don't know. <laughs> maybe, maybe not your mama jokes, but still. Like, who cares? You know, the thing, about, the thing about the world is that the world is controlled by violence. The world is controlled by... by, 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 by yeah, by, by violence. If you're not talking violence, I don't care. I don't care what you're saying. You know? The, the thing we're having with Sankara was that his mans was, was devising a plan of violence. That's, what, that's why Sankara should have listened. His man was in a position to, to, to get into his home and, and shoot him. That's why Sankara should have listened. If, 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 his, if his mans didn't kill Sankara, Sankara would still be in power and still running the shit. You know, and if you have a, if you have a disagreement that doesn't involve violence, I don't care. I mean, I listen. You know what I'm saying? I don't care. I listen. I'll be like, okay. Well, I mean, if you don't like it, you know, if you don't like it, that's fine. Well, you know, it's like it's like it's like back in the day we used to say, uh, "Why don't you make me?" Or, "Or you in what army?" You know what I mean? You in what army basically means that if you do not have an army, I'm not listening to you. I don't have to listen to you. See what happens is this: I, I could go outside and and I could go pee on the side of a building, right? I could go pee on the side of a building. And somebody can say, hey, stop peeing on that building. I'll be like, man, whoosh, make me. And then, and then it's a motherfucking police officer. And I say, well, you in what army? And then it's five police officers. <laughs> then, and then I just zip up and walk away, you know, if, if they let me. <laughs> uh, but it says, we cannot look at America today as a standard for what democracy is or is not. Initially, rich elite men go together, got together, made the rules, and dictated the terms of compliance. Most people couldn't vote. Yeah, I mean, that's the thing. But it's like, realistically, as long as you're not talking about violence, yeah, you could talk about anything you want, 
in regard to the president. But it's, if you do talk about violence, I'm telling you, the police, the FBI, or whatever, they will visit you. You know what I mean? I, I'm not even like I don't even I'm not even going to joke about it. They will visit you. You understand? And and that that's not just because you black. Because even if a white person says so and so and so forth, right? The, the secret service and them visit them, and they say, "Hey, I heard you know you, you know what you said online." And they're like, "Well, it was just a post thing." Yeah, well, you said it, so you know. And they could for, like I don't know. I'm not sure. I ain't look into it. I don't need to look into it. But yeah, I'm pretty sure they could arrest you for that. Just just FYI. So yeah, there's uh, there's definitely laws against violent speech or violence, uh, or agitating violence. You know, but if you just disagree and like, but that's the thing though, you're supposed to be agitating violence. And if you're not, if you can't agitate for violence, that means that the society already worked on silencing you. The society already worked on punishing you. The society already worked on excommunicating you from the decision making process. Because if the state is the monopoly of, of violence, right? You've already been executed from the state. Because the state could be violent with you. You just not you just saying I don't want to be violent with you. You know what I'm saying? I don't want I don't want to kill you, sir. Okay, good. You know shit. But 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 I I still have the power to kill whoever I want because I'm the state. You understand? Major says we cannot look at democracy. Oh yeah, uh, Major says most people didn't have a political voice. No, and and, and you got to remember that this is early America. They had people kidnapping other people from other countries. Kidnapping people from other countries, forcing them ag across trips where two thirds of them would die, working them to death, hurting them if they ran, they frolicked. Okay? Hurting them, breaking their limbs, torturing them, putting weights on their backs, all that type of shit under these presidents. And then so it's like, well, you know, yeah, I mean, this, this is the reality. There was a body. That was being violent with another body who happened to be our ancestors. And now today we're looking at like, oh, we're not going to be violent with you. And they're like, good. And they make all the decisions. And you might disagree with some of their decisions. That's fine. But you ain't changing their decisions. Like I said, I disagree with uh, the Ukraine war. He just sent another 30 billion. You know, I don't know how much billions he sent right now, but he just sent some more money. He don't care if you disagree. Uh, Shock says, as Africans, we come from societies of initiates. Not everyone can say their piece. You have to be vetted. Exactly. You have to be. A, you have to be an adult. You have to. You have to pass. You have to have the rites of passage. You have to be an initiate. You have to. You have to. You have to be studied. You, and if you're not, if you're not in that sort of framework, if you're not in that, if you were not initiated into the decision making process, you're not in the decision making process. You have an opinion on it They're like well great that you have an opinion on it But we're having a meeting You want to come to the meeting Well too fucking bad Too fucking bad You should have been You should have been a man You know I mean By man I mean like You should have went through the initiation Wait a minute You see what Sankata said uh, But like I said He's surrounded by these people And what happens is that They end up killing him um, and And he ends up dying and the whole society ends up falling backwards because of it. So let's keep reading a little bit. Since 1911, Robert Michels uh, argued that paradoxically, the so-called socialist party, the socialist parties of Europe, despite their democratic ideology and provisions for mass participation, seem to be dominated by their leaders, just like traditional conservative parties. Michel's conclusion was that the problem lay in the very nature of organizations. The more liberal and democratic modern era allowed the formation of organizations with innovative and revolutionary goals, but as such organizations become more complex, they become less and less democratic and revolutionary. Michel's formulated the iron law of oligarchy. Who says organization says oligarchy? He later became an important ideologue of Benito Mussolini's fascist regime in Italy, teaching economics at the University of Perugua. And Benito Mussolini, they say, looked at Mar Marcus Garvey, like, yo, I got to do that shit too. Um, but anyway, um, this is this is important, and it's, again, this is this is common sense. Cause like I, like I said, when you was looking at what what uh, Sankara was saying, right? What Sankara was saying was he was talking to his own political party, which was the oligarchy, which was the oligarchy, which was the elites. It wasn't the masses' participation. And what happens is that he just wasn't checking his man. 
Okay, he wasn't checking his man. And so now his man kills him, eliminates whoever might have been a Sankata loyalist, and now he holds on to power for 27 years. Under America, of course. But he holds on to power. Something that Sankata couldn't do. And, and partly because he might have been buying, buy, you know, trying to be mass. Like, he tried this. He says, look, let's have the mass participate. Let's go out and tell the masses that we're good. Let's uh, let's have a democratic, uh, you know, let's just, you know, try to eliminate the troublemakers. And it might be an emotional and it might set us back a little bit. But uh, what what was it? Was his, was his killer worried about setting, setting the organization back when he killed him? And for 27 years, guys, 27 years, that's a long time. Michelle's stressed several factors that underlie the iron law of oligarchy. Uh, summarize them as bureaucracy happens. If bureaucracy happens, power rises, power corrupts. Now, again, that's why Zungu theory, so just take it with a grain of salt, right? Power doesn't necessarily have to corrupt, but, but it is what it is. Any large organization, um, and it, it doesn't have to corrupt, but here's what I want you to understand, that these are the people with the power to kill other people. Okay. Any large organization, Michelle's pointed out, has to create a bureaucracy in order to maintain its efficiency as it becomes larger. Many, oh uh, yeah, any organization has to create a bureaucracy in order to maintain its efficiency as it becomes larger. Many decisions have to be made daily that cannot be made by large numbers of disorganized people. For the organization to function effectively, centralization has to occur and power will end up in the hands of a few. Those few, the oligarchy, will use all means necessary to preserve and further increase their power. This is common damn sense. This is common damn sense. Now, this is source three. Looks like it's Darcy. Yeah, Darcy. Iron Law of what again? Um across organizational forms so it's a it's a paper but uh again this is this is this is what it is this is what it is everywhere and, and I, I talked about this in the book of power in the sense of centralization is where it's how you have to centralize so if you're centralizing you're going to centralize it in the hands of human individuals a few people this is this is this this is really fundamental when we're talking about revolution because in revolution, you're going to have, you already have, in, in whatever organization you're trying to have a revolution in, you already have a few people with the power of the society in their hands. And then when you have the revolution, you're either removing these people or you're putting these people onto your, onto your side. Okay? You're either doing one of the two. And, 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 that, and, and if you don't do that, if you, if you remove those, those few people or what have you, those institutions that they were maintaining, right, are, are, are liable, are likely to collapse. You understand? This is, this is just what it is. According to Michelle's, this process is further compounded as delegation is necessary in any large organization as thousands, sometimes hundreds of thousands of members cannot make decisions via participatory democracy. They can't. You can't have a thousand, you can't have a hundred thousand people in a meeting deciding on, uh, you know, on daily tasks. You know, that's the thing that we got to remember, that laws are made daily. Laws are made daily, even in America. Laws are made daily. You know, the this, this system was complaining the other day about how in Florida they have, uh, they, they're changing the election. Um, and they're changing it such that teachers now have to upload whatever it is they use as teaching material to the internet, um, to like the cloud or whatever, so that the teachers, so that the parents can look at what they're um, teaching from and then disapprove or approve of it. And if the teachers don't do this, they're going to be uh, charged with a felony, Right? Uh, so they basically are forced to do this. So somebody wrote a law that says, hey, we're going to now control what the teachers are doing and, and, and vet every single, and the parents have the right to vet every single teaching material uh, uh, that they're going to use. And it's like, yeah, th th you could write that law because if you are in the government, your whole thing is to write laws. And you could, you could write a law that's contradictory. You could write a law that says parents cannot go into the building. You could write a law that says parents have to be in the building. Whatever it is, you have the power to write laws. And, and, and can you have that? Can you delegate that power to hundreds of thousands of people? Do hundreds of thousands of people have the, 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 the time to write laws? The time and expertise to write laws or do only a few individuals have that time and expertise? Because if they have 100,000 people are, are, are writing all the laws, who's working? You know what I'm saying? Who's, 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 who's making those rubber ducks? 
You know who's sanding? Who's sanding? Who's who, who's who's putting up the walls? Who's uh who's who's uh who's writing the codes? If everybody's writing laws, and everybody's voting on laws all day, no, you can't have that. So because you can't have that, you're going to have a handful of people doing all these things, and because you have a handful of people doing all these things, you're going to have an oligarchy. And this is in everything. This is in, this is in every organization. You know, if you have an organization about what have you, whatever it is. That's what's going to be. And, I, and this is not the main paper I want to go into, so I'm going to try to rush through this one. Uh, but let me see what the comments are like. Um, uh, we cannot, so, so far, um, Forecast says, I don't know y'all would take me out because I don't agree, LOL. I think you're asking for trouble with a dictator eventually. Um, I don't know y'all would take me out because I don't agree. Um, well, it depends. Like, are you in a decision? Again, nobody's worried about, like, nobody's worried about me. You know, if I'm not in the decision, if I'm not in the decision circle, it don't even matter. You know what I'm saying? Like, like that's the thing. The reality is that if all I do is drink and 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 sleep and eat, nobody's looking to take me out. Nobody's looking to kill me for doing that. You know, if I'm in the bar and I'm like, man, I can't stand how forecast is running shit. You know, forecast be uh. You know, forecasts be, uh, you know, he, he don't want us to get no fucking vaccines. Well, fuck that guy, man. I'm going to get my own vaccine. Right, whatever. If that's what, you think, that's what you think I sound like. Right? But, like, if I'm just doing that in the bar, nobody cares. Or, like you said, if I if I run a big campaign, if I'm running a campaign where I'm just like, hey, guys, we're going we're gonna to get you all vaccinated, you know? I mean, if you worried about it, then, you know, like, like again, I'm not changing the government. You just I just influence a bunch of people to get a vaccine. That's fine. Um, uh, but that's it. Like, like, like nobody's losing sleep. Nobody's like, let's get him. It becomes different when I'm like, Hey man, fuck forecast this thing. Here's the ones to get vaccinated. Let's go and kill him. That's when you have to say as a, as a man, no, 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 no. I'm gonna get him first. You see? Again, it, it really comes down. It really boils down to violence. Nobody cares about what you say. You know, and that's the thing that, that's another thing that we as African people have to, realizes that nobody cares what you're saying you know like nobody cares what you're saying unless you're agitated for violence you know you you could you could you could say you could say anything in the world except for you're gonna you know what i mean like if somebody like it's like i said if i walk into a building and a person is like hey man we don't we don't you know like hey, i don't like you and it's like okay cool man right but if they're like i'm gonna fucking hang you then it's like whoa hold on you know, I mean, it's, it's just a big difference between I don't like you and I'm going to hang you. You know, just a big difference. Um, Major says, you have to trust someone to be your administrator. Initially, someone must be designated as the final decision maker. I think it makes us vulnerable to try to get everyone's opinion all the time. Yeah, exactly. And it's like, because it's not going to work. Somebody's, somebody's decision is going to have to come through. Uh, but nobody in the decision circle but one or a few. With data dictatorship, you... Don't choose who is in charge. They even pick who represents me. And like humans, you will pick those who will agree with you. Yeah. I mean, yeah, but that, again, the way how the dictator comes into power is through violence. So again, unless you unless you are more violent, like what about it? Unless you're more violent, what about it? If somebody comes into power through violence, they 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 kill people to get there. You know, it's kind of like it's kind of like the hood, right? You go in the hood, some of these neighborhoods you know, barring, like, if you don't include the police, some of these neighborhoods are run by gangbangers. And, I mean, you might not agree with it. You might, you know, you live in, you live among them, and you might not agree with, hey, I don't think you should be the main gangbanger. Well, then challenge the motherfucker. You don't challenge him. Like, if you don't agree with it, then challenge the motherfucker. And if you can't win the challenge, right, then, like, tough titties. It's, it's like what the it's like what the it's like what the uh, the CIA says about uh, 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 messing with other countries. It's like if you don't like it, well, tough titties, tough luck. Like 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 what are you what are you gonna do? If if you if you're going to just say I don't agree with you, well that's fine. They don't nobody nobody has a hundred percent approval. If you say hey you know what I know you killed twenty people to to get your position, but I want to be your equal, right? Then they say no. I mean, they they can say yes. Oh yeah, sure, you can be my equal. Or they can say no. And if you don't, if you can't hear no, if you can't, if you can't, if you can't, if you can't process rejection, that's on you. 
You know what I mean? Just hope they don't get violent with you. That's the reality. Like I said, I don't agree with um, 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 Biden's war, but he's like tough titties. You know, he's not, well, uh, I guess this system doesn't work if, if Oni doesn't agree with me. He's like, I don't give a shit. Who the fuck is Oni? You know, the guy, the guy talking, to, talking to nine people on, on a Sunday? You know? <laughs> he's, seen, he's seen bigger churches. You know? Um, <laughs> hey, but uh, we got nine great people, though. All right. Um, further increase their power. Uh, according to Michelle's, the process is further compounded as delegation is necessary in any large organization. Um, as thousands, sometimes hundreds of thousands, uh, impressive this, is this has, to date, been dictated by a lack of technological means for large numbers of people to meet and debate, and also by matters related to crowd psychology, as Michelle's argued that people feel a need to be led. Delegation, however, leads to specialization, to the development of knowledge bases, skills, and resources among a leadership, which further alienates the leadership from rank and file and entrenches the leadership in office. You know, the people in power know the office know what to do. They have the specialized knowledge. People outside of power do not. And this is why Africa gets screwed over so much because a lot of us do not know the inner workings of nations. Michelle's also argued that for leaders in an organization, the desire to dominate is universal. There are elementary psychological facts. Now, again, this is Wazungu, so just take it with a grain of salt. Those, thus, we were prone to seek um, power and dominance. Again, that's uh, Wazungu, right? Bureaucratization and specialization are the driving processes behind the iron law. They result in the rise of a group of professional administrators in a hierarchical organization, which in turn leads to the rationalization and routinization of authority and decision making. A process described first and maybe perhaps, perhaps best by Max Weber, later by John Kenneth Galbraith, and to a lesser extent, a more cynical extent, to the Peter Principle. Max Weber, by the way, is one of the that white people call them the founders of sociology, like one of the three founders. And, you know, they actually include Du Bois in that. So it might be like one of the four, actually. But one of the three is Max Weber and some other dude. But anyway, uh, bureaucracy by design leads to centralization of power by the leaders. Leaders also have control over sanctions and rewards. Leaders have control over punishment and rewards. They tend to promote those who share their opinions, which inevitably leads to self-perpetuating oligarchy. People achieve leadership positions because they have above average political skills. As they advance in their careers, their power and prestige increases. Leaders control the information that flows down the channels of communication, censoring what they do not want the rank and file to know. We don't know what Buhari is up to. We don't know everything that Buhari is doing. They censor it. So even if you disagree, you you what do you disagree with is based off of what the leadership tells you to disagree with. Like basic leadership gives you to disagree with. You don't even know what they do up to. Like I don't know the extent like what like how if if the news didn't report Biden's spending in Ukraine, how would you know? And does the news report all of Biden's spending? All of Biden's activities. Do they report it? You know, you think America has free press and, and they give you what you should be whining about. But honestly, in your daily life, if it weren't for the, 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 this journalism, right, this, this sort of this quote unquote free press, how would you know what Biden, what America was up to in Ukraine? Could you tell me what America's up to in Mali? Could you tell me what America's up to in Burkina Faso? Could you tell me? No. You only know what the state wants you to know. You understand? And so, yeah, you might, it, it, you know, if we say, oh, I disagree with what you're saying, yeah, you disagree with what I'm saying because of what I said I, said I did. You know what I'm saying? And now, now, of course, it might, sometimes it does touch into your life, you know, like, 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 like Forecast was saying, the vaccine mandate. But, but do you disagree with what I'm doing in, 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 in Rwanda? You understand? You don't. Leaders will also dedicate significant resources to persuade the rank and file of the rightness of their views. So they will they will do that. This is compatible with most societies. People are taught to obey those in positions of authority. Therefore, the rank and file show little initiative and wait for the leaders to exercise their judgment and issue directives to follow. Um, I think I'm just going to stop right here. Implication, the iron law of oligarchy states that all forms of organization, regardless of how democratic they may be at the start, will eventually inevitable 
uh, develop oligarchical tendencies, thus making true democracy practically and theoretically impossible, especially in large groups and complex organizations. The relative structural fluidity in a small-scale democracy succumbs to social viscosity in a large-scale organization. According to the Iron Law, democracy and large-scale organization are incompatible. And that's the reality. If, if, you're, if you're doing a large-scale organization, then you're not going to think. Um, uh, solution for... Okay, so this guy has a solution. Uh, reception... All that kind of stuff. So I do want to go into elite theory just to, um, like very briefly. And you guys can see the links inside of the description. Um, let me see what the comments are like. Uh, Brother Bakari says, we as a people is not looking for power. Oni, you're talking about power. As a group, we are trying to figure out why we can't be friends with everybody. Yeah. I mean, that's, 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 the, that's, the, that's the issue. It's like when you're talking about power... You're talking about, oh, we have to, like, when you organize on a large scale, right? When you're running dams, when you're running energy plants, when you're, when you're, when you're running uh, nuclear waste disposal, when you're running, uh, uh, you, you know, the, the postal system, when, when you're running, uh, you know, coordination, you know, when, when you're importing bananas and exporting mangoes. When you're doing all these sort of big line things, you're not talking about, hey, I want everybody's, I want 100% approval. Hey, you didn't select, I didn't select you to export bananas. No, but I'm, I'm running the bananas, I'm, I'm exporting bananas. You understand? I'm selling bananas. Th that's it. And you're like, hey man, well, we, nobody told, uh, no, you didn't decide it. Yeah, of course, it don't matter. Because what are you doing? That's a big question. You know, and you're like, and you know, you might be the person who's, uh, who's, who's picking the bananas from the tree, right? If you're pick, picking the bananas from the tree, right? And you're like, you know what? I never decided on you being the CEO. Okay, tough. You didn't decide it. Now, are you going to violently overthrow me? No. Then I don't give a shit. It's like, like I said, like, like, like the, like the gangbanger. In 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 uh, when I when I went through the, like I said I go I walk through the hood, and the gang banger there I actually met I actually met one of the gangsters there. Um, he was actually a nice intellectual guy, but he had uh like when we was talking because I don't know why this this brother set me up. He <laughs> some brother was like uh, hey I want you to meet this guy and me and him were talking and I was kind of like and he was challenging me on uh on some uh ideas he had. He actually even thought that uh. Trump would win the election. I was like, it sounds crazy. Uh, but anyway, but <laughs> um, I ain't talking about the first election when Trump did win. But anyway, this guy is uh, talking to me about, um, you know, politics and all that kind of stuff. But while we were talking, I kept noticing some boy on a bike riding by, uh, circling the block every, uh, like every so interval, right? And eventually when I learned, when I asked his brother, hey, what do you, what do you do around here? And he he didn't, he didn't say he was a local gang leader. He said he was uh, in a fraternity, <laughs> you know, in a fraternity in this area. And I was like, a fraternity in Brownsville? I had no idea, right? Uh, but, <laughs> you know, the other brother who, who was introducing us was just kept laughing. And I was like, why are you laughing? But, yeah, because uh, there's basically this book called, uh, I think like, How to Run a Revolution or something like that. And they say you should introduce yourself to everybody, including the uh, local gang leader, if you're working in the area. But, like, yeah, who elected this gang leader? Nobody elects them. You know, and, and even if somebody did elect them, you weren't a part of that vote. That doesn't mean anything. Because unless you're going to come at this guy and say, hey, you know what, your territory is my territory, which other gang leaders will do. But unless you're going to come to this guy and say, your territory is my territory, then guess what? It's his territory. Um, Forecast says, we are against Biden and their system talking about making our own What's going to happen when me and people get tired of you taking my taxes without representation? If you ain't about violence, ain't nothing going to happen. Plus, I don't think you can be a good leader or dictator if you don't even listen to your own people. Yeah, you listen to, you listen to your people um, if, you, if you want to. Yeah. You listen to your people if you want to. Again, like, it really comes down to this. Like, if, like, what, I'm talking about being realistic. I'm talking about being realistic. Idealistically, sure, you, you have your public forum and you listen to your people and your people run you. But realistically, like I said, I met the gangbang or the gangbanger in Brownsville, right? You don't. He doesn't have to listen to me. He doesn't have to. 
And there's nothing I could do to compel him to listen to me. The only one thing I could do to compel him to listen to me, and if I don't feel like I would do it, then it, he, doesn't, he doesn't have to listen to me. If I say, hey, man, you know, in your gang, you should uh, make everybody read the Book of Power uh, for a day, for, for, for 30 minutes uh, a day, right? He could say, yeah, sure, I agree with you. Or he could say, no, fuck off. You understand? He doesn't have to listen to me. Like, I'm talking about realistically, he does not have to listen to me. Whether I think he's a good leader or not, right, is, is immaterial for him. He's the leader. And that, that's just how the world works. It doesn't matter if I think Biden's a good leader or not, because I, I don't. But he's a leader. Just like I, I didn't, didn't matter if I thought Trump or, or, or Bush were, were, were bad leaders. They were the leaders. And the only thing, only thing you could have done, or the only thing most people did in resistance to Trump, was either vote him out or leave the country. A lot of, a lot of white Americans led, left the country. They were like, oh, Trump's president, fuck it. That's it. Unless, 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 unless you, unless you, like, that, that's, that's the reality of the world. You know? Uh, we could be like, well, you know, you know, like Donald Trump wasn't a good leader. Donald Trump doesn't give a shit. He doesn't, he doesn't, he doesn't care. Because some people liked him. Someone liked him. You know? Just quickly, I'm going to go over this a little bit. I'm not going to go through the beginning. Just this right here. It's just the Italian school. Because I, I was really looking for this Pareto. Um, so we're co-founders of the Italian school of elitism, which influenced subsequent elite theory in the Western tradition. The outlook of the Italian school of elitism is based on two ideas. One, power lies in position of authority in key economic and political institutions. Okay? If you're not in a key economic or political institution, well, then, you, you know, whatever. Like, nobody gives a shit. Two, the psychological differences that sets elites apart is that they have personal resources. So that's why I'm saying get your personal resources, for instance, intelligence and skills, and a vested interest in the government, while the rest are incompetent and do not have the capabilities of governing themselves. The elite are resourceful and strive to make the government work. For in reality, the elite would have the most to lose in a failed state. You know, it's like, it's like right here. Cause I like what Forecast is saying. Forecast is like, well, what if the people don't agree? Most of the masses don't give a shit about what's going on. You know, even, even when I was in, um, in college, I had a sociology class, I think. No, not sociology class, political science class. The white boy is reporting on white people. He's like, only 10% of the people. There's a white man talking. Only 10% of the population really care about the politics. Only 10% really follow politics. Other 90% do not. Even when it comes to the election, only about 50% of the American population even votes. 50% of the eligible voters vote. Only about 50% of the eligible voters even vote. And that's one day of the year. And, and that means of those people, about 20% of them actually care about the politics. I've, I've been in, uh, I've been in the uh, election um, thing. And most people who go to vote, they just vote down ticket. They just vote down ticket. What does that mean? That means that they go in to the ballot. They say, where are the Democrats? Okay. And they bubble in all the Democratic circles. That's it. They say, where are the Democrats? Vote them all, all the Democratic circles. Or where are the Republicans? Vote all the Republican circles. You know, so, so if you are the mind, if you have a mind that says, I can make better decisions, then what you have to do as an individual is gather your resources and get into the position to make better decisions and hope nobody's fucking trying to kill you while you do so. That's it. This is, this is what I'm saying. Because see, Forecast has the mind where he's like, hey, you know what? I'm not just going to go along with anything. If you're not going to go along with it, then be the leader. If you don't want to be the follower, be the leader. But you can't, you, you know, it's like, it's like, it's like, it's like in a car. If you want to set the course, be the driver. If you do not want to set the course, either get on the side seat or get in the back seat. That's it. But you cannot be in the back seat trying to drive the vehicle. Make a left, make a right, turn over here. You can't do that. 
Because someone's going to push you out of the car. If you do it too much, someone's going to push you out of the car. So if you want to be in the front seat, go in the front seat. If you feel like you can't be in the front seat, then you can't be in the front seat. But the people who are in the front seat are confident they could be in the front seat. When they get it behind the wheels of a car, they say, yeah, I could, I could do this. Or, like if they are a Scotty, if they are, you know, Euro, a Eurasianist, if they're traders, they're going to say, well, this, this car is on autopilot. You know, the white man set up a good autopilot system. <laughs> you know, I'm just going to sit in here and, and drive to the bank. And yeah, if you want to challenge that motherfucker, sure. Well, but just understand that uh, the autopilot system, you know, the, the Knight Rider vehicle, uh, has its precautionary measures for infiltrators. For somebody else trying to get in the car. Anyway. Um, Pareto, let's go back to Pareto. Uh, Pareto says, uh, Pareto emphasized the psychological and intellectual superiority of elites, believing that they were the highest accomplishers in any field. He discusses the existence of two types of elites, governing and non-governing. He also extended the idea that the whole elite can be replaced by a new one, and how one can be circulate from being elite to non-elite. Oh, I don't know if this is the right paper. Shit. Um... Uh, but right here, this is what I wanted to say. This is the thing that I, I thought that this brother sent me. So I said, the circulation of elite is a theory of regime change described by Italian sociologist Vifredo Pareto. Changes of a regime, revolutions, and so on occur not when rulers are overthrown from below, but when one elite replaces another. The role of ordinary people in such transformation is not that of initiator or principal actor, but as follower and supporters of one elite or another. So basically... Revolution is replacing elites with other elites. Now, I didn't read through this, and I guess I'm not really going to read through this. I don't know if this is the paper that I wanted. So there was some paper that I wanted to read. I don't think this is it. Um, wait, let me see if this is it. A basic, axiom for, uh, a basic axiom for average that people are unequal physically, though intellectually and morally. Uh, in society as a whole, or in any other particular strata and grouping, some people are more gifted than others. So yeah, generally speaking, you have some people who are brighter than other people. Right, whether intellectually or morally, whatever, just better. Right, physically, you know, obviously, me and me and LeBron James, you know, like LeBron James has the physical superiority over me. Um, anyway, the term elite has no moral or honorific connotation in Pareto's usage. It denotes simply a class of people who have the highest indices in the branch of activity. You know, so like let's say LeBron James is an elite basketball player. You know, uh, it's not that he's he's a good, he's a better person than me. But in basketball, he's definitely better than me. <laughs> like, just period. Right? Bridget argues that it will help if we further divide the elite class into two class categories, governing elite, comprising individuals who directly or indirectly play some considerable part in government, and non-governing elite, comprising the rest. His main discussion focuses on the governing elite. Um, sorry, I thought it was going to be something about revolution, but, um, but anyway, so that's pretty much it. What, I'm gonna, what I want to do is I want to show you guys this uh, YouTube video. Um, but before I continue, let me remind you again that I'm part of a podcasting network. You know, this just gives me time to uh, uh, this gives me time to uh, look for the YouTube video. This is D Web with the Harsh Reality Podcast. Ask you to tune in where we tackle the news of the day that affects our community only on KWAZ Radio. Greetings, everyone. This is Koku from the Bitter Medicine Podcast, inviting you to tune in to the Bitter Medicine Podcast on KWAZ Radio. Greetings, fam. Tune in to The Learning Curve with me, I think I remember the Revolutionary it. Matron on KWAZ Radio. You are listening to the Pro-Black Perspective on KWAZ Radio. All right, so... What I want to do is I want to show you guys this video. And basically, this guy right here, the guy in the upper right corner, is going to talk about his, um, how he went to Kenya and he got in good with the leadership there. Okay? So this is another way you can go about, you know, like, like, um, um, like Forecast is saying, right? What if I want to influence the leadership, but I ain't willing to kill them? Okay? If you want to do that, then... Here's a way to do it, right? So he says, listen to this before you start doing business in Africa. This is part of the Bikwilan network, you know? And so 
I was trying to look at a full video of theirs. I couldn't, but it is what it is. Um, basically, this is Dwayne Number Wild. It's Chris Marshall. And so this the guy who we're going to talk about is uh, um, Obstacles to Opportunity. So listen to what he's going to say. He's going to say, look, he went to Kenya, right? And he was able to get in good with the governing elite based off of going to them and saying, hey, I have credentials and I could improve society in this way. And this is this is this is my proposal to you. And the elite took the bite. OK. And that's what it is. If you can go up to the leadership and say, hey, I got it. I got it better than what you got. Like, like that's another thing, too. It's not like you go up and say, hey, I disagree with you. You go up and say, hey, I agree with you. But I think this is how you can do it better. And then all of a sudden you're in. So that's another thing that we have to consider is that, you know, like, for instance, you don't like my like, 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 like forecast is saying I got a vaccine mandate. You don't like my vaccine mandate. You just got to come along and say, hey, I found an alternative to your vaccine mandate, you know, which is, you know, a health initiative, you know, like a like a, a food health initiative. And and then I'm like, you know what? I like your program. I like the cut of your jib and, and you're helping people out and you showed me how you can do it. And, and that's what it is. So listen to this dude right here, and then we're going to go in. Actually, I might have to, just for licensing reasons, is I might have to, like, cut it off every once in a while for whatever reason. But, you know, you guys get it. This is the most, the important, most important thing. I remember in doing my, uh, well, first ventures to Africa, and it was Kenya. And uh, they have a website where you go on the website. I show it on my channel where it shows you what type of industries or what type of particular factory, whatever the actual industry is that you want to establish there's like public slash private that means with government or privately by yourself only a, a joint venture it's a combination of many but they display it on the website and they're like come invest in kenya and these are all the investment vehicles and you can go to the website and you can say okay i know about this i don't know about it i can learn whatever the case may be and then it has a price and etc so anyways i reached out for aloe production at one of the places which i told you was Beringo, and most of the misconception from just regular people was, oh, well, you when you went. Okay, so look, let me just, like I said, I got to cut through all that kind of stuff. So the guy is saying that in Kenya, they had a list of businesses or businesses that they, like industries they want help in development. And so this is just a black, it sounds like, it seems like a black American individual who says, I'm going to go up and help with this aloe production. You know, they say they want somebody for an aloe industry. I got them. Right. So that's another thing. The state is saying, I want you. I want you. I want help from the people and the people are responding. But this is what we consider the elite. You see what I'm saying? Now, he's not elite in America, but but uh, but, you know, like when I well, again, when when uh, we're going to go by what Pareto was saying with elite, which is he has like, again, he's looking at motherfucking other countries and saying I could I could improve their industry. Uh, let me look what forecast said. He says, I didn't say that I'm just asking about challenging them or speaking out. Some dictators silence and all up losing views and punish people for it. Yeah, some some people are motherfucking unstable. And if you're not willing to fucking kill them, then it doesn't matter. Like 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 I said, after Sankata, the other motherfucker came through and 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 fucked up. But if you're not gonna kill him, he's gonna run for 27 years. Uh, forecast said, I agree, but that's not what a dictator. I get what you're saying about violence, but all I'm saying is if you ignore the people, you just waiting on coups or civil wars, having a stable nation. Yeah. And that's what I'm saying. If you, if you run shit wrong, then people are going to take violence into their own hands. That's it. Like, and nobody, and so like, yeah, if you're trying to prevent, like I personally would try to prevent a coup, obviously, but not everybody's trying to do that. Like right now, we're talking about elections in Nigeria and the people if if the if the if the wrong party comes through if the APC or if the if, if Nigeria if Buhari's party uh, uh, wins because they're still in the elections there might be violence consequences for a lot of people millions may die if not millions thousands hundreds of thousands may be killed bullets coming through them all because motherfuckers could not just run a proper society. But that's the reality of the world. You know, Real Bad Gentleman says, call and response type governance would be ideal. Don't know what that is, bro. You know, I <laughs> don't know what that is. Uh, uh, but I don't know what that is. I, I really don't. Uh, what is call and response government? Because again, like, again, you're talking about like 100,000. Because you talk about countries with 40 million people. So what is call and response for 40 million people? Across, uh, you know, land masses the size of, 
half of the United States. What what is call and response for that? You know what I mean? Like like you have to like most people are not even going to live in the capital city. Like for instance, when I was in, the entire time I was in Tanzania, so I was in Dar es Salaam. The entire time I was in Tanzania, I was not in the capital city. I wasn't even near the city government. Most of all that the three months I spent in Africa, right? I wasn't even in the capital city. I wasn't near anybody in the capital city. There was a whole bevy of living and livelihood outside of the capital city. And that's everywhere. There are whole lies outside. None of these people have anything to do with what's going on in the Doma. Well, not none of these people. Most people had nothing to do with what was going on in the Doma. I saw one politician. Forecast says, only his vaccine to get rid of the coon chip in us. Although some people are going to rebel um, uh, to, to, get rid of, to get rid of the coon chip. Oh, yeah, for sure. Shit, boy. Them coons are going to rebel. I don't know why you taking up for the coons. We're going we gonna, to we gonna inject them with some shit. <laughs> <laughs> they're gonna have some serotonin. They're gonna have some, you know, some dopamine. They're gonna, you know, uh, it says information go across the people from the leadership and the people respond back to the leadership. Yeah, but how are you gonna filter through 40 million responses? 40 million educated responses. You know, I'm talking about, so I told you guys, I, I, uh, I'm familiar with this, uh, game called Dungeons and Dragons, right? It's, a uh, it's, the, it's like the first role-playing game. So if you guys like Final Fantasy, I know a lot of people not going to like Final Fantasy, but if you like Final Fantasy, you like... Like, basically, it's derivative of this game called Dungeons & Dragons. They come out with this new game, right? This new version of their game, and they put out a survey, right? And they put out a survey, and three months later, they're like, we're still reading through the survey responses. You know? How big... And, like, even if you... Because you're saying the leadership is going to have to read through four... 100 million responses. Oh, sorry, 40 million responses. How? How big is this leadership? And then even when you're reading through it, who's reading through these responses? And how are they going to summarize and bring it? Like, it really boils down to, again, you have an elite. You have an oligarchy. Because some, if somebody has to read 40 million responses or somebody has to read, uh, like, again, like, like, if you answer the survey, the people who are answering this, uh, people who are reading the survey are the people who are going to be in charge. And even then, they're going to have to do their own weighing system. And even then, not everybody's going to be remarking on, uh, like, not everybody's going to be putting in a, a survey. Uh, like it's, just, it's just impractical. Like, overall, it's impractical on a large scale. On a small scale, if you have, like, 10 people in a room, Right? You could do 10 people, all of them being heard, all of them being decisive, so on and so forth. But when you get into the realm of 100,000 people, right? When you get into the realm of 400,000 people, when you get in the realm of 40 million people, you, you got to realize that unless you're going to waste everybody's time, every waking hour on government, because if you're governing 400, 400 million people, or if you're governing 40 million people, right? Uh, if you're governing 40 million people, right, then you're making a shitload of decisions every day. You know what I mean? Like, we're talking about the budget. You ever, you ever, y'all ever look at the budgets of these states? They're like 400 pages. And they, and they each have something to do with something, uh, sometimes fundamental or instrumental. You know? Well, well, this, this, uh, this, org- this building over here needs a new... Um, um, uh, you know, what's that thing called? Uh, whatever it needs. Uh, it needs. It needs a better ceiling. It needs a better, uh, I'm thinking about vending machine. It needs this amount of vending machines. You know, real bad gentleman now saying, you don't have to tell everybody everything at the same time. And if you don't, guess what? Then you have certain people who have uh, special knowledge that, that makes them fundamental to the administration of that government. And, and you just cut off a bunch of people from information. There's a faith factor involved in being in charge that things will go as intended, but it will take reasonable time. Exactly. So what I'm saying is that even in that of this call and response thing, you create an elite because you understand, look, with 440 million people, you can't have, uh, if, if, if 10 people or if 
if uh, realistically, if two hundred thousand people are running are running the shit for forty million people, the other forty million people are not really doing anything, and that's okay. The forty million people could be getting fish and 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 driving cars and 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 you know some of them selling their bodies, some of them buying bodies, you know whatever it is. But but you gotta understand that you can't you can't like you can't. Um. Anyway, let's go back to this uh, video. I have to go see the politician how much money did they ask for, right? Because we have this idea that they're corrupt and etc. Uh, but what it really was was that no different than the brother just mentioned about the acres. When you come to people with a formulated plan and in a capacity to actually see it through, you are in a higher position at, from the politician's eyes. You're not come right. by somebody coming to the politician saying, "Yo, give me homes, give me food, give me shelter." Like. How could even one politician figure that out, right? <laughs> so you see, he's saying you go to the politician and say, I could I could work. You know, and it comes back to uh we're actually gonna play that. We're gonna we're gonna look up that one. Um hold on a second. So we're gonna look up that one. Oh Marvin Collins guy, make sure you guys check out Marla Collins. she's pretty good. Um comes back to oh shit, I put the wrong one. Um it comes back to uh, Carter G. Woodson right here. So we're going to look up Carter. Um, all right, so we're going to look into this pretty soon. All right, let's go. But when you come to him and say, hey, look, I'm in a community of engineers, doctors, and lawyers, or whatever your community is. I'm in a community of engineers, doctors, and lawyers. You see what I'm saying? I'm a part of an organization, another organization, another oligarchy that can offer good services it's just even farmers we've created this pack we've created these agreements that we have this land what we need from the government is to facilitate for us to develop this land and we're going to head in this direction with it and when the people come with those strategies not even develop the land you understand i'm a part of a group that can develop the land in this area over here so you go to the government correct and like the masses because you can have 80% of the people just contribute some money and then 20% of the people really with the actual manpower to actually see it through. Right. And then it's levels to it, right. It's levels to the organization and how it works. And when you get that done, then you find that you become one, the politician's best friend, right? Oh, by the way, shout out to, um, whoever just sent me a cash app. Appreciate it. <laughs> I didn't even expect that. I was like, yo, because somebody else was asking me for money on Cash App, but I was looking at it like, why somebody asked me for money on Cash App? But uh, shout out to, uh, I don't know if I should say their name. So um, I guess I should, right? Why not? So Mosi. Um, so shout out, appreciation. Uh, but anyway, um, uh, what, was, what was this guy saying? <laughs> He'll start sending you private text messages. Hey, man. Yeah, you see, he's saying the elite now, all of a sudden, the people in government are sending private messages. To this guy saying, hey, appreciation for, uh, you know, bigging up and, and, and making the community better. So let me actually just rewind that. I was reading. People just contribute some money. And then 20% of the people really with the actual manpower to actually see it through, right? All right. So wait, you heard that though. He says that you could divide the society from 80 to 20. That, that's actually Pareto, by the way. But Pareto says the 80-20 principle. But either way, he's like, even in his organization, Right. 20%, 80% are just contributing funds for the 20% who are moving and shaking the organization. He's saying even in his organization. So it's not me bigging up some Italian sociologist from way back. This is this gentleman I've never even heard of until yesterday, right? Who is saying that in his own organization, he's doing that. Now, granted, 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 like I said, Pareto, this guy is uh, the person who says that 2080 principle so it's very possible that, uh, right here he says, Pareto Principle was named after him. It was built on his observation that 80% of wealth in Italy belonged to about 20% of the population. And like eventually, you know, you hear a bunch of people saying the same kind of thing. Um, but, but what I'm saying is that uh, in that regard, uh, you know, he's not, like, like this, is, this is in this guy's organization. Now, this guy does not seem like a capitalist. He seems, he seems like, I mean, I don't know him. I, I don't know from this video. But he seems like he might be on the more, you know, let's let's help everybody out type thing, which is good. But even he's saying that in his organization, 80 percent are just rank and file contributing, you know, funds, which is good. Right. Uh, like I said, shout out to Mosi, but it's good. And then you also have uh, what was it? 
twenty percent who are really doing stuff. And that's 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 also what it was going to be. And we're going to head in this direction with it. And when the people come with those strategies, not even like the masses, because you can have eighty percent of the people just contribute some money, and then twenty percent of the people really with the actual manpower to actually see it through, right? And then it's levels to it, right? It's levels to the organization and how it works. And when you get that done, then you find that you become one, the politician's best friend, right? <laughs> He'll start sending you private text messages. Hey, man, that, that gave me about 20 points in the voting polls. I really like you, man. If you got any other solutions, you're at the top of his list. So you see that he's like, and that's what I'm saying. Like, like, cause like, like what, 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 uh, what, what, what forecast was saying earlier, you know? What if I don't like how you're doing shit? Well, then come through. You know, say, hey, man, look, here's a better way to do, here's a better way to develop this area, and it's going to help you out politically. Right? And then he does that, and then all of a sudden, I'm like, forecast, you got any other ideas? That's it. Uh, Real Black Gentleman says, information, um, uh, Real Black Gentleman says, information go across the re people from the leadership, and the people respond back to the leadership. He'll tell everybody, so on and so forth. Oh, he says, Real Black Gentleman says, okay, just read the Iron Law article, and I see where you're going with this. Real Black Gentleman, where you at? <laughs> we read it together. All right. And so when people have those fundamentals about how we... I'll be my brother from another mother, by the way. ...can change our country. How can we change what's going on, even in my own life? I think, once again, that relationship between capital and also our pan-Africanism needs to develop because it is... But look, pay attention to this. So basically he goes and he helps out in a fundamental industry and he helps out politically and he helps out people. And what happens is that he then becomes an elite too. You see what I'm saying? He then becomes an elite too. If he if he does this well enough and he does it good enough, he then becomes an elite. So forecast says, I don't like what you're doing in this region. I'm going to... Uh, I'm going to show you guys how to how to how, how to build cars. I'm going to show you how to build cars. This is how we want cars to be. He does it in such a good way that suddenly he's now head of the car manufacturing plant. So now he's the elite too. You understand? Because we trust his decision making. Now, when somebody else comes along and says, "No, no, no. This is a better way to do cars." Now, uh forecast has to make a decision. Do I kill the motherfucker who says he has a better idea or do I let the motherfucker replace me or do I let the motherfucker work with me you understand one of those, one of those things do, do I tell the guy get out of here go to another country or do I let them work with me and realistically that's what the elite circular that's what the elite, elite theory is because most people don't have any ideas on designing cars I do not have an idea on designing cars I could not tell you the first thing about designing cars I can't even drive. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I can't even. I can't even fucking drive. So like, you know, that you definitely ain't gonna hear me talk about what what's the best way for a car, so on and so forth. But but that's what somebody does. And, it's, and it's, if they come through and they present themselves to the government, they come correct. That's what it is. So I'm gonna talk about organization and organizing, right? Maybe after this guy is finished speaking. But what in that in that capacity? Oh, actually, no, I think now he's just gonna big up Amos Wilson, um, Blue for Black Power, but. So I'll play that, I guess, but um, it's not going to be related to the conversation. Uh, but what I'm going to say is that, uh, no, actually, let's just finish playing the video. It's kind of something that's ostracized due to our history in a relationship with capital. We were victimized by it, but it really wasn't the capital that was victimized and it was just people. And so once again, we get mad at the tool and not really the actual wielder of the tool. And so it's kind of like gun violence, right? I don't like guns. Like guns ain't do nothing. It's just crazy fools with guns, right? And so as we build on that, the brother made a great point. I think the primary person that anybody needs to listen to is Dr. Amos Wilson, the blueprint for black power. It was the first intellectual that I had. Of course, beyond Marcus Garvey, but he doesn't have so much literature and records to look back on, right? It's always like third person or something. But Dr. Amos Wilson, he got it. He got the whole picture. And so as if somebody's coming into the stage of, I am using history for my gratification. I understand it. You feel like valueless. You know, you didn't have your history. So it makes sense why people take that and use it for that. But then you have to evolve. And then Dr. Amos Wilson is that evolution. We'll give you a general outlook of everything. 
that, that, that deals with power and give you the applicable tools to go forward and say, okay. And then you start your own building. And I think that's the most important thing. That is the Bible. No disrespect yeah. to religions, but I the agree. Bible outside of the spiritual world, so I don't step on those spiritual toes. It should be Dr. Amos Wilson, the blueprint for black power. All right. So, uh, yeah, I mean, uh, and I mean, that's a, that's a, that's an interesting disclaimer, but what I'm going to say is to use that. Yeah. So what we, um, uh, as a people, uh, must understand right there is that you can present yourself to the elite and you, or you must present yourself to the elite and you must yourself become an elite. And so what I wanted to say in regards to organization is what does organization mean to you? Or what does organization mean to us? And, for that reason, for that, I want to probably conclude with uh, when you talk about organization, you have to talk about uh, like like not just what this other guy was saying, the guy before on uh, political parties or whatever about olig organization is oligarchy. But you have to have some sort of economic purpose. OK, you have to have some sort of economic purpose. Um, you have to have some sort of economic purpose. Uh, and so right here, what is it? Uh, let's see if I can find it. Shit. You have to have some sort of economic purpose. And I, I guess it comes back to this one right here, actually. Carter G. Woodson quote. But this guy, the law of, uh, uh, law of iron law. So I guess it was Michelle. Yeah. Um, Robert Michelle's. Uh, you have to have some sort of economic purpose. So it comes back to, I'm guessing this was the Carter G. Woodson quote I wanted. Um, which is, if the Negro could abandon the idea of leadership and instead stimulate a large number of people, members of the race to take up definite tasks and sacrifice their time and energy in doing these things efficiently, the race might accomplish, the race might accomplish something. The race needs workers, not leaders. Such workers, so that's what I'm saying. Organization is, is, is not just about the leadership. It's about organizing people to work for some economic purpose. He says, such workers will solve the problems which race leaders talk about and raise money to enable them to talk more and more about, right? Uh, again, you're not you're not supposed to be talking. You're supposed to be either killing because you're a fucking man or you're supposed to be working because you're a fucking man. Right. Uh, he says, uh, when you hear a man talking uh, about uh, raise money, enable themselves to talk more and more about when you hear a man talking, then always inquires as to what he is doing and what he has done for humanity. Oratorian resolutions do not avail much. If they did, the Negro race would be in a paradise on earth. It may be well to repeat here that the saying that old men talk of what they have done, young men of what they are doing, and fools of what they expect to do. The Negro race has a rather large share of the last mentioned class. So as to say that we cannot, we cannot be satisfied with talking, although I don't know if that's the kind of quote I really wanted, but um, we can't be satisfied with just talking, right? We have to be satisfied with working. You know, and I actually, I, I, didn't, I probably shouldn't have played the Amos Wilson part at the end, but part of the Amos Wilson part, if you really study it, is this, that even if, that one thing, even though Amos Wilson might not have the, um, the record of, of, of business success or, or organizational success or, or what have you, although he did have a business um, in Harlem, uh, like I think like a print shop or something like that, right? But although he may not have that, you have to realize that even... Like he was able to, notwithstanding, uh, provide a philosophical underpinning for uh, certain individuals to uh, elevate their status as well, you know. So, like, like this gentleman, and not just this gentleman, but quite a few gentlemen, um, say, "Hey, you know what? I read Blue from Black Power, and I felt, uh, I felt a way to, I felt a ways about, you know, getting out and doing something, you know, as opposed to if they read." Um, other materials that are printed in the black canon. And so what that tells you is that you can as well give people, you guys as well can inspire people to do more with their lives, you know, uh, and not just rely upon, you know, like either the negativity of history or the positivity of history, but inform people to do things with their lives and the ability that they have. And so that's one of the things that I want to leave you with, which is re realistically speaking, I want you to get yourself organized. But even if you do not get organized, you know, I want you to understand. I want you to be encouraged to do things in this world and not just encourage uh, yourself, but encourage other people. Right. The, the change of the world can be done. This gentleman that we saw earlier in that video, he is not a, a real elite in America. 
right? But he was able to get in good with a, a, a part of the Kenyan government because he was doing good. You know? And even, even if they were a scar, even if they even if they were traders, even if they were sellouts, they still said, hey, you know what? You could do good by me. And you and you have to realize that even among the traders and the sellouts, is that some of them might just be dummies. Some of them don't know what why they're there. Some of them are just in that position uh, for whatever reason. Right? In fact, look at this right here. This is a Carter G. Woodson quote. You, it make sure you, uh, if you want to really understand African Americans, like read Carter G. Woodson's <laughs> Women's Education of the Negro. But he says, history shows that it does not matter who is in power or what revolutionary forces take over the government. Those who have not learned to do for themselves and have to depend solely on others never obtain any more rights or privileges in the end than they had in the beginning. It doesn't matter what you do. Again, you have to be a part of the independent a part of those who have the abilities and the skills. Otherwise, you'll never have more rights and privileges in a society. If you just want to eat, drink, and sleep, that's fine. This is back to the Congolese. If you just want to eat, drink, and sleep, that is fine. You can eat, drink, and sleep. You will not be a part of the government. And that's all I could actually say. Um, so that said... Um, that's actually the podcast. It looks like there's no other comments. Appreciate everybody for sticking through or, or coming through. Uh, we got five concurrent views right now, which is great. I appreciate you all. I think we peaked at, oh, we peaked at 12, which is pretty good. So appreciate the 12. Appreciate the five. Appreciate everybody who listens to this on playback. Appreciate everybody who's playing a video game in the background and they're listening to this. Appreciate everybody who's who's playing this while they're cooking or whatever. I, 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 I'll, until next week. Uh, thank you for coming through. And of course, like I said, I think Cassidra Cheeks is going to be here in uh, seven minutes. She's going to have her podcast. And then um, I think, I don't know if Brother Bakari is going to do something today, but I know Forecast, I mean, I know Harsh Reality is going to be uh, doing something uh, at 8 p.m. Uh, later. So uh, you guys are going to have a full pl- pl- program. I'm glad that I could have started it off. Uh, appreciate uh, Forecast telling me great live. And that's pretty much the entire podcast. So appreciate everybody. And Shemim Hotep, Ankuja Seneb Neb, Amen, Ma'at, Dua Netra.